An essential tool you're going to want to use when you're working with JavaScript is your web browser. One of the things that all the modern web browsers have built in are various web consoles. These are tools that help you to see what's happening with JavaScript and other web technologies on the page. I would encourage you just to pick one that you want to use, even though there are in all of the modern browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and even IE. I'm going to be using Google Chrome primarily in my video examples, so I'll focus on how you can use that. Firefox also has an excellent console available, but if you are going to use Firefox, then you're going to want to install Firebug because it gives you more robust control over the console. This is the page that we were just working on, so if I refresh the page, you can see that my JavaScript alert occurs, and when I click OK, it'll load the rest of the content on the page. In order to access the developer tools, you're going to want to go to the little wing menu right here, and if you click on that, it'll open a flyout menu. You're going to want to go down to Tools, and you're going to want to go to Developer Tools. The keyboard shortcut on the Mac is Command-Shift-I, and on the PC, I believe it's Control-Shift-I. When you click that, it'll open up the developer tools. And I'm going to expand my window now that I've opened that so we have a little bit more real estate to look at the developer tools. The developer tools are organized by different tabs up at the top. So right now I'm in the element tab and this tells me the HTML elements that are displaying on the page. If I go to sources and I hit command P, and that would be control P on the PC, it'll open up the various linked files. Now this file is super basic and it only has the HTML file, but if this file was linking to other CSS and JavaScript files that were externally linked to my file, they would be listed here as well. If you double click on this, it'll open that particular file in the source panel. And if I expand this window, it'll give me a three column view. This can be really helpful when you're trying to look through your code and find out what's happening. The tab that we're going to be most concerned about is the console tab. So I'm going to click console and you can see this displays what's happening in my file. Now because our JavaScript is running we're not getting any warnings. If we go back to our editor and make a change in our script I'm just going to set the alert to not match my variable so that my script will fail. If I refresh the page in the browser you can see that my script is no longer running and now in the console panel it's giving me a warning and letting me know that there's an uncaught reference error. Toll is not defined. If I twirl down on the triangle here it'll give me some additional information so you can see that it's tagging this as an anonymous function. If I look to the right it's going to tell me the file that this is located in and the line number. This is really helpful when you're trying to debug because right away I know I need to look at line 9 and I need to find something called toll. If I go back into my editor then I can see at line 9 I have something called toll and hopefully I would realize that that was incorrect and I should make sure that the name that I'm calling matches my variable name. If we save the page and go back into the browser and click the refresh button, you can see that now the script is executing in the way that we want. So there's not too much going on in this file, but in addition to ex inspecting any errors that you might have with your JavaScript in the console window, you can also type and get information from it. There's a built-in object in JavaScript called Window Global. It's always defined. If I type Window in the console and hit Return, it's going to go ahead and give me some various information about the Window object. Because I'm executing this page in a web browser, there's actually quite a bit of information that's, that's executing with the window object. But you can see that I can type this in and immediately get more information about it. If you type a name and then type the dot, so if we type window dot, you can see that I get a pull down menu and it's going to give me the individual properties within that particular object. So I can go ahead and I can click one of these properties and then if I hit return it's going to give me information about that particular property. This will work for many of your defined objects and various things that you've written inside your code. You can also define things on the fly in the window. So for instance if I make a variable and name it x and let's go ahead and set that equal to 2. You can see that now I have a variable. It's been created, but it is undefined. If I want to 
call this variable, I can actually run an alert right here. And now if I hit X, you can see that it gives me a JavaScript alert box with the value of 2. Sometimes when you're typing code in the console, you'll want to go ahead and create a additional line. You can do that by clicking Shift Return. So if I wanted to pick two lines of code, for instance, let's say I wanted to create a variable called Y, and we'll set that equal to high. And then if I do Shift Return, I can run an alert and specify that I want to specify Y. And now you can see that my alert box displays high. In order to clear out the console and revert back to your last saved version, you'll just hit the reload button. Any of the changes you make in the console are simply temporary and they aren't augmenting or being saved to your file. So I just wanted to point out the console because we will be using this to look at our code and sometimes it can be a very useful tool for debugging JavaScript.